say just a word uh, about the service tonight while you're looking at uh, 1 Peter chapter number, or 2 Peter, I'm sorry, chapter number 1. Now tonight, we'll continue, Lord willing, the ser series of messages on what has changed the church. That'll be tonight at 6 o'clock. Last Sunday we had bad weather and a lot of you were uh, kind of in for the weather and it was, it was pretty bad. We didn't run but one bus last week and uh, we uh, found out that uh, it, it's pretty bad in several places. But anyway, everything's okay for tonight. No excuse, be here tonight. Come pray and bring somebody with you. We've already had, uh, good night, I don't know. I, I don't know how many hundreds of people have already watched the service last Sunday night online, something like seven or 800 uh, probably already and is going to go way up in the thousands here in the next few weeks probably and uh, that will help people in other churches. We've all, I get a lot of, I've got texts from Georgia and, and uh, Tennessee and uh, some, I think uh, two or three states and everywhere already people saying it really helped them. We're not trying to be ugly or be mean or be judgmental or anything like that but sometimes, sometimes you have to, to show somebody what's right you have to put two things beside each other and say, now, this is wrong, this is right, and the Bible settles that. So that's what we're doing. One out of 500, so it would be four out of 2,000 messages that, that we're doing this. So uh, uh, we're certainly not trying to say we're the perfect church because we're not. Or I'm me, the preacher, I'm not. But I do know what's right. And my job is to tell you what's right. And, uh, and we'll be doing that tonight. So you don't want to miss the second in the series, What Changed the Church. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, people say, Brother Danny, uh, we're having some problems. My son don't want to go to church no more. And I said, why? He said, well, he's got some friends. And he said, they all go to the cool church. And he said, at the cool church, you think, when you walk in the door, you think you're in a restaurant. And then by the time you get in there, you think you're in a nightclub. And they said, we don't know what to tell him. And that's happening all over this country. This country, it's not, listen, church ain't supposed to be like a nightclub, people. It's not, amen? amen? Amen. When I go to church, I want it to be like church. Amen. If you want to go to a club, you want it to be like a club. If you want to go to a bar, you want it to be like a bar. If you go to church, you want it to be like church. And so that's what we're talking about. And next week and the following, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have the final two. So, be praying, bring somebody with you, six o'clock this evening. You're gonna be, you're gonna be amazed, all right? Second Peter chapter number one, and look at verse 10. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. The verse said, give diligence, that means Spend some time, effort, prayer, making your calling and election sure. In other words, the Bible encourages you to make sure that you're saved and that you're going to heaven when you die. Everybody in here is going to die one day, sooner or later. You're either going to die or Jesus is going to come back. One of them two things is absolute certain. I, I was talking to um, uh, my wife and she said something like, we're gonna die. And I said, well, you know, one of these days I'm gonna die or you're gonna die. And she said, no, I want us both to go together. And I said, well, I ain't no hurry if you wanna go on. Well, I'm, I'm just kidding, I didn't say that. Uh, but she said, I can't stand the thoughts of you dying. I don't want, I, if, she, if you die, I wanna die too. And, but the truth is, get used to it, people. That person sitting beside you is gonna die or Jesus is gonna come back one. Absolute, 100% certain. That's a wonderful thought to start the day off with, isn't it? But you got to say that because it's true. It's true. And so I'm gonna talk for a few minutes about knowing that you're going to heaven. The, the fact, the, 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 the question is, where are you going when you leave? I'm gonna show you a preacher tonight that says the main thing God wants us to do is find out how to live here on this earth. That's not the message of the word of God. That is not, brother, the message of this world. Jesus did not come to make the world a better place. Jesus come to seek and to save that which is lost, get us out of here. 
There ain't no hope for this world. No hope. And so let's talk about that for just a few minutes this, this morning, and, and I'll, I'll let you go. Um, you know, uh, you meet, everybody you meet nowadays says they're going to heaven. I mean, my goodness, it's hard to find somebody that says, you going to heaven? Yeah, I'm going to heaven. Uh, everybody wants to go to heaven. Uh, nobody wants to die. You know, you've heard that old saying. And uh, everybody's planning on going to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven. I'm planning on going to heaven. I've got my reservations in. I hope that you are. I hope things are ready with you, between you and the Lord. We're not just in here this morning because it's Sunday and it's a thing to do on Sunday. We are in here preparing for eternity of living forever and ever and ever somewhere. I want to just take a few things, just kind of off my uh, uh, shoot from the hip this morning a little bit, a little bit more than I do normally, and just talk to you. Everybody listen to me. It's, it's the greatest thing in the world to know that you're going to heaven when you die. Uh, the, my pastor always told us, he said, the two greatest things in life are, number one, be saved and know it. And number two, be in the will of God and know it. That's two greatest things in life. You can't get any greater than those two things. To be saved and know it and be in the will of God and know it. That means everything in the future is all fixed and that means you're doing the best you can right now with your life. I want to make my life count for the Lord. Uh, you only got one. Uh, Somebody was talking the other day. Who was it? One of, one of my girls or... Somebody they're talking about uh, being, being 30, and they said, 30, Lord, I'm 30. I'm 30, ooh, 30 sounds awful. Uh, how did I get here so quick? I said, you think you got to 30 quick? You ain't seen nothing. Buddy, you think, you think oh my goodness, I'm already 30. Listen, bu- buddy, you better, you better jump up and down, clap your hands, and holler hallelujah, then you'll be 40. And then you'll be 50. That's right, and then we'll, we'll stop right there. Uh, but it, uh, I mean, it, this thing keeps speeding up faster and faster and faster. You can exercise all you want. You can take vitamins. Uh, I mean, fill up this, this church building. Uh, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can eat right and blow all your money on organic food and everything else, and you're still getting older and meaner and uglier every single day of your life. That's awful, isn't it? Uh, but that's the curse of sin uh, that's, uh, that's on us. You just might as well be getting ready for it. Now, I want to say a few things that, that help you to know that you, are, you, you cannot go to heaven doing these couple of things only. First, you don't go to heaven because you are a church member. To me, you, I, I shouldn't even have to say that, but you would be surprised at the people who think, I, I belong to the Methodist church. I, I've been a Baptist all my life. I, I've been, I was raised Presbyterian, preacher, you, now I, I, I say, are you saved? I sure am. Uh, are, are you going to heaven? I've been a church member since I was nine years old. And to me, to me, that don't even make sense. I, that's, like, that's, like me, that's, that's like me asking you, are, are, um, are you married? And you said, I've been a Baptist all my life. What kind of stupid answer is that? <laughs> and it, you know what that means? It ain't got nothing to do with being married, right? You know, I say, are you married? And you say, well, I, I don't, I pay my bills every, every month. I think, uh, are you hard of hearing? Are you married? And, and you say, well, uh, mama, mama always raised us to do the best we can. Are you, are you crazy? Uh, listen, if I say, are you married? You'll say, yes, no. Or for some of you, last I checked. Uh, but uh, but uh, did you know what? Listen, you, when I say, are you saved? You, know, you say, uh, you, it's either yes or no. Not I'm trying to be, I'm hoping to be, I'm doing the best I can, I'm gonna hope everything works out in the end. Brother, you better nail that thing down, people. You better nail that thing down. You say, well, how can you know that you're saved? I'm a fixing to tell you. It's not because you go to a church. I mean, going to church don't make you a Christian. For heaven's sake, brother, uh, Hitler was a Catholic all of his whole life and never even got excommunicated. I mean, Lord have mercy, Bill Clinton's a Baptist. Uh, that, that don't mean nothing. I mean, uh, some of the meanest crooks in the 
in the, in the city of Morgan and go to church every single Sunday morning. They're so crooked they fell in a barrel of fish hooks. They wouldn't get stuck all the way, all the way to the bottom. I'm telling you, they screw their socks on in the morning. Uh, there's, that don't make you a Christian. I mean, somebody said, well, I go to church, so I'm a Christian. Going to church don't make you a Christian. No, just because you sat in the garage don't make you a car. That's right. And just because you sit in a bakery don't make you a donut. You'll look like one pretty soon. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you something, brother, just because you go to the house of God does not make you a Christian. I went to church a few times growing up, and I never did get saved. When I was 18 years old, I settled it. The old account was settled. I nailed it down. I nailed it down. You say, how do you do that? I'd love to know that, preacher. I would love to know that I'm going to heaven when I die. Well, the first thing you don't do is trust going to church. You just don't do it. I mean, uh, many many people think because they belong to something, it's like belonging to a um, some kind of civic club or, or something like a, the 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 moose or the elks or the goose or the or the ganders or or uh, uh, possums or or the masons or something like that. Uh, the Bible didn't say Jesus never died for a lodge. Jesus never died for a club. Jesus never died for. A, and and by the way, you're not supposed to belong to something you have to keep secrets in anyway. I talking about the Masonic Lodge. I don't know if there's anybody in there that belongs to it or not. If you got any sense, you won't. Uh, because uh, Jesus said everything a person does like that is not supposed to be in secret. And any th- time anybody wants you to say, this is a secret, we can't tell our secrets, you say, bye-bye, see you later. There is no secrets in the Christian life and in, in a real Christian church or in a Christian's life. Amen? I, I don't make you a Christian. I say, well, they give, they give to organizations and they, and they help these burned children uh, uh, to have a better life and they, and they help this and that happen because uh, they, they can, they can uh, uh, better somebody's life. That's fine, all good and well, but that does not guarantee you a spot in heaven. No, sir. I'll tell you something else. Doing the best you can does not guarantee you a spot. I mean, you wouldn't believe the people. If you ever go out witnessing, say, well, are you a Christian? They say, I'm doing the best I can, preacher. Uh, well, are you, are you going to church? I don't think you're doing the best you can if you don't even go to church. Have you trusted the Lord as your Savior? That's the best thing you can do. If you've not come to a point in your life where you said, I'm a sinner, he's my savior, I trust him, you're not doing the best you can. Best thing you can do is get born again, buddy. Best thing you can do is get saved. But you know what people mean when they say that, don't you? When people say, I'm doing the best I can, what they mean is, well, I'm not, I'm not cheating on my husband. Or I'm, not, I'm paying my bills. I'm... I'm I'm, I'm doing people right. I'm not doing this. I ain't getting drunk. I ain't living like the devil. I ain't living in no kind of sin or nothing like that. So therefore, I must be saved. No, you don't go to heaven because of what you don't do. See, man said one time, he said, I don't smoke, I don't cuss, I don't chew, I don't fool, fool them at do. I don't watch dirty movies. I don't get... I take drugs, I don't smoke pot, I don't, I, don't, I don't do nothing like that. And the guy said, well, that's good. There's people over here at the funeral home that don't drink and don't cuss and don't smoke pot and don't do that. That don't make you saved, amen? You are not saved because of what you don't do. Now, you shouldn't do none of that stuff. Nobody should, but especially a Christian. But that is not what makes you a Christian. The truth is, these mountains used to be full of people that lived good moral lives all their life. And I mean straight with you. Would tell the truth. If they told you they'd be somewhere at a certain time, you could count on it. They'd be there. If they owed you money on the first of the month, buddy, on the first of the month, it was laying there. People used to have honor, but that didn't make you a Christian. There were a lot of those old mountain people had honor and lived uh, uh, a, a, what you'd call a, very clean life, didn't never get involved in no kind of scandal, didn't get involved in no kind of drugs or alcohol or shady business deals or cheating people. I mean, nobody could find a thing wrong with them and died without Jesus and went to hell when they left here. You say, Brother Danny, that don't sound fair. Well, what it is is you've got sin inside you. You're born with it. You have a sin nature, and no matter how good you live, it is 
not good enough. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none good, no, not one. The only way you can be good is to receive his righteousness on your record and then when God sees you, he sees him. That's it. You know how come I'm saved this morning? You say, well, Danny Castle, you ain't much. You are absolutely right. Amen. I ain't much and don't claim to be much. Never have been. Never will be in this world. But I am just as saved right now as a man can be. My destination is fixed. I have the promise of God that I'd go to heaven if I died right now. Hallelujah, people. You say, how do you know that? You just a minute ago said you were sorry. I am sorry. But here's what I've done. Jesus Christ was absolutely perfect. His record looked like that piece of paper right there. It never had one mark on it. He never committed one sin, never said one word wrong, never took one step out of the way. And he died and rose again. And when I trust him, that record is put on my record. And when the Lord sees me this morning, he sees my record clear and plain and clear. That ought to give you a shout this morning, hallelujah. If you ever shout about anything, it ought to be that he put his record on your account. Thank God. That's a blessing this morning. You say, well, I'm a good person. Well, I ain't. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be. Truth is, you ain't either. Amen. I know how these church people, good church people are. I've met some of these good church people. Lord, I've been done doing this a long time. Lord, I've been in some of them churches. Lord, some of them other women, they'll get up, Lord, and their dress touch the floor. They ain't got no makeup and they ain't never had a haircut and just as mean as a striped snake. Hey, man, they don't fool me, buddy. I was, <laughs> they said one time this church, uh, this guy was at church and... Uh, he was, a, he was a worker like an electrician or something like that. And uh, he was doing some work down this town. And it was a little bitty town, little bitty town, where everybody knew everybody, like Mayberry, somewhere like that. And everybody knew everybody, and everybody went to church on Sunday. And they said, uh, uh, they, they said this woman who was the church gossip, she gossiped. Everybody in church, you know, most churches have one woman in it that makes sure Everybody knows about everybody else's faults. They believe God called them to tell all the bad stuff that they hear about everybody. And they are ordained to do that. They are, but it wasn't from the Lord. And she, she saw his truck sitting down there at the tavern in the local town. Well, she come back and told everybody in town and in church that old so-and-so had been out drinking. And he's out there hanging around them bars. Places, and I had spread to that woman, to that woman. She called her and she called her. She called her husband. She told her husband. By the time Sunday come, everybody in the church was praying to that poor backslid hypocrite guy hanging out at them bars on Friday night. So they got him up and said, man, we're praying for you, man. I hope you get your things right. He said, what are you talking about? And they finally got to the bottom of it that that one old Blabbermouth had sp had spread it all over the church that he was hanging out the bar and it, and everybody and everybody lost confidence in him and he said they said well she's the one that started it she said she saw your truck down there and so so he he said are you gonna do anything back to it? he said nah let it go let it go so you know what he done next weekend on Friday night he took his truck and he parked it in her driveway and left it there all night <laughs> amen. Got her, didn't it? All the gossips in town now had something to talk about her. But see, you, you know, you don't impress God by being this good person. No, 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 no. You don't impress God uh, by by doing. I mean, I mean, um, I I don't I don't. Y'all know me. I don't pay no attention to football. I I couldn't care if I never seen a football or a football game. I don't care nothing about. It. Never have. It's, it's not a fair game, but it gets exciting once in a while. It's not fair because some of them play the whole game, don't get to touch the ball. It's not fair. Of course, basketball's like that sometimes, ain't that right, Coach? I have played it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, y'all know, I, I'm not really a football fan. I'm really not. The only time I like football is when it's really exciting. It's all on the line, the big game, you know, da-da-da. Well, um, 
I, I didn't even know who was playing for the national college championship when they told me about that Clemson. The night the game's already over, and I didn't even know they was having it. And Kerry sent me a text of the, of the coach of, of Clemson of him giving it a testimony. And come to find out, from what I know, and I could be wrong, from what I know, the guy's a Christian. And he bragged on the Lord and give the Lord the glory and everything. And you thought, you know what? You can't, you can't help but admire somebody like that. Praise God, brother. If you got enough guts to get on national TV and the whole world looking at you and say, I give the credit to the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God for it. Amen. I don't even know what he believes. I don't know what he is. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything good or bad about him. But I will say this. Thank God he's got enough guts to stand up there and brag on the Lord. Thank God. I used to like them John 3.16 signs they put in the end zone. Somebody hold, every time it, the camera goes out, somebody hold it up, John 3.16. I think the devil finally moved on them and they stopped that. But hallelujah. I mean, I'm glad for everything George Foreman ever said positive for the glory of God, whether in pretense or whether they, I don't know, if the Lord gets glory, hallelujah. That don't take that man to heaven. Old Dax sitting over there. Is Dax sitting over there? Wake up, Dax. I don't, I don't say much about it because he's my grandson and I don't want people to think, oh, he's up there. But... I, and I don't do that. If it wasn't for that, if he's just one of your kids, I'd make a big deal out of it here. He's the national champion motorcycle rider for his age group, number one in the United States. And he's in magazines and got sponsors and people all over the country. And, and I don't ever say that because I think, I don't want people to think, oh, no, he's up there. But you know what? I'm, I mean, I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. But I'm going to tell you something. I told him, heard Tell him a long time ago when he, when, he, when he wins, brag on the Lord. And every time they give him that microphone, he says, I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old. I don't, I don't know. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. I'm more proud of him for doing that than I am winning the race. Because there's thousands of people. And you know what Carrie told me? She said, Daddy, she said, since, he's, since he was number one, I mean, he won the national championship last year and two years ago, and he's got number one things all over this thing over at their track. And, uh, uh, since, she said, since he's been doing that, other kids have been standing up saying, thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. That's good. That's good. And I'm proud of him for that, but that don't take him to heaven. No, no. You say, Brother Danny, I, I gave a lot of money and I helped single-handedly build that church up there on top of the hill. That's, that's wonderful. That won't take you to heaven when you die. You know what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 13? Though I give my body to be burned. But if you don't have the Lord, charity, the power of the Holy Ghost, the, the, your name in the book of life, you're going to be shocked when you die. I heard about some kids this week. I'm just going to say a few more things here this morning. This is how messed up our society is. Our society is so messed up. Two girls, you might saw it on the news, 12 and 14 years old, stabbed their mother and, and shot her. A 12-year-old and a 14-year-old together ganged up on their mother and they, she still had a knife in her back when the, when the uh, ambulance got there and was dead. And you know why they did it? She took their cell phones away from her. Now, you don't think we're living in a messed up day and time? If you don't think we're living in a messed up day and time, you, think, you don't think people's addicted to a cell phone. Take it away from them and watch what happens. Another girl's on the news. Some of y'all might have saw it. Called 911. And they played the 911 call. Said, uh, just please, could you come to such and such, such and such, such? They said, What's wrong, ma'am? She said, My dad, he's still in property that's not his. Took her cell phone. And she honestly is on the news. And the cops came to the house. And she said, My dad is taking, it don't belong to him. And he took it. And luckily, the cop was, had a little sense. And he basically said, Listen, you little brat. You ought to thank God you got a daddy that cares enough about you to put a roof over your head and you're living off his food and sleeping in his bed and, and, and living off his income. Uh, he's got a right to take that phone away from you. 
We're living in a crazy generation. We're living in a generation so mixed up. They don't know where they're coming or going. And the Lord looks down the whole through the whole thing saying, look to me, look to me. Be saved. Get right with God. Be saved. Get right with God. Be saved. Get right with God. Get right with God. And people saying, I'll just take my chances. I'll wait. Trusting in being good. You're not good enough. Let me give you just a couple more things right quick and I'm through. You know where your best, biggest mistake is? Here's your biggest mistake. Is making, making yourself think you got a long time to go. I don't ever bring my cell phone at the pulpit, but I had something on it I wanted to read to you this morning. I always leave it in my office or in the car. Good idea for all of you. But I brought it up here to read you something this morning. This is a, is a testimony that you would think would be on one of them focus on the family series. You know, they have these people. Where do they find these people? You heard these people? <laughs> That's their amazing story, an amazing family, and everything's great. And I think, man, are they, are they, is that real? Uh, but they have some amazing testimonies on, on some of them. But let me read you this one. Coming up sweetheart time, this is a man talking about his wife. Ain't gonna name no names. You might have heard of him. Quote, my wife is absolutely, fantastically, wonderfully amazing. You guys said that lately? <laughs> Look at y'all. Don't roll your eyes, I ain't through. In addition to her normal activities of taking care of our home, grocery shopping, cleaning the house, paying bills, cooking meals, Putting up with me, she has not only washed but detailed my car twice since January 1st. His wife washed and detailed the car. But wait, there's more. She goes to the gym and works out regularly. She helped me prune the apple tree, peach tree, and plum trees, and grapevine, and then raked up the limbs and put and prayed them and put them on a brush pile. She has not missed a church service this year and even gone early a few times to help work at the church. Taking a church member to a doctor's appointment, an appointment of her own. She takes care of the dog and the cat and spends time in prayer for her family, friends, missionaries, and others. She studies for and teaches Sunday school, visits the grandkids and kids, she even takes time to listen to some preacher named Danny Castle on the radio every day. She never neglects to make me feel like I am the perfect husband. Oh, I almost forgot. She's read the whole King James Bible since January 1st, 20 days. That's the biggest bunch of bull I've heard in my life. Ain't nobody can do all that stuff. But there she is sitting right there, that little girl on the front row. Raise your hand, Michelle. She didn't know I was going to do that. <laughs> it embarrasses her. See what will happen to you if you sit on the front, up here in the front? I think, I honestly, I don't even believe that. There's not that much time from January 1st to 20th to do all that. I'm just kidding. You know what? Michelle, who nobody can find fault with, who has not sinned her lifetime, will not go to heaven because she's done all that. You can read the Bible through every day and it don't make you good enough to go to heaven. Now you ought to. Guarantee you, that cleans you out a little bit. I guarantee you. You read the whole book in 20 days, brother, you're, you're gonna be quoting some scripture. But I said that to say this. It's, it's not enough. Your best is not enough. We keep trying to impress God with, Lord, I've done this, and Lord, I stood up and gave a testimony in front of thousands of people, and oh, but Lord, I gave top tracks, and Lord, I gave money to that. That's not enough, y'all. It's not enough. That's not, it's an insult to God to say, I've done this, so I should go to heaven. Amen. Trust what he did. Trust what he did. Trust what he did. Listen, ain't nobody in here no better than nobody else. There ain't nobody in here no more right uh, necessarily than nobody else. You, we're all on level ground. We're all sinners at the foot of the cross. Let's 
put it in his hands this morning and walk out of here saying, I ain't good, but thank God he is. Lord, put his goodness on my record and I want to walk out of here and do right. And that'll make you want to live right. That'll make you want to go to church. That'll make you want to stay away from sin and love your neighbor. A Christian shouldn't be sinning, right? I mean, there's a difference between trying to live right and failing and just wallowing in sin. See, if you're living in sin, then you need to get it fixed and then serve God. You can't do anything for God. You don't need to be, you don't need to be preaching, singing, doing nothing if you're living in sin. Get, get right with God first. Get it right with God first and then say, all right now, Lord, help me to do what you want me to do. But that don't take you to heaven. That don't take you to heaven. I'm not going to heaven because I prayed and studied and stayed up to 12 o'clock last night and worked my head off all week trying to get ready for the big thing tonight. And I, that, ain't, that don't impress God one bit. You know what impresses God? My faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Are you here this morning and you don't know? Are you not sure? Are you here this morning and your life's all messed up? Are you here this morning and you say, Brother Danny, I've done let myself get into a mess that I know ain't right and I need to get out of it and I know I need to get my heart right with God. Is that your situation this morning? Let's get it right. Are you here this morning and you've never been saved? You've never, there's never been a point in your life where you said, Lord, I want you as my Savior and come in. You need to get things fixed with God this morning. Let's do that today. And I don't never preach like this. You usually have an outline. You can, you can keep up with, pay attention. But I just blurted this all out of my heart this morning because I feel like somebody here really needs to get right with God. Let's stand. Let's stand with our heads bowed this morning. Let's stand with our heads bowed this morning. We're going to have a song in just a moment. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. I want to ask you a question. I've told you to get right with the Lord. Now I'm going to tell you how. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day to pay the price for your sins and mine. Will you let him work in your heart today? Will you? It'll be too late one day. One day it'll be too late, my friend. You let God speak to your heart. If you're here this morning, you have been saved. You have been saved. But there, deep down inside, you know things ain't right. We've already got folks coming. Why don't you come this morning? Why don't you just slide right out of your seat there, sir? Young man, young lady. And just get down here. Make a new fresh start here this morning. Amen. Amen. Folks coming from all over already. We're not even prayed yet. People are coming. How about it? Husbands and wives, mamas and daddies, come on right now. Father, do what ought to be done right now. Touch every single heart here today. Have your way in our lives. Lord God, help that one that needs to come to come this morning. Lord, touch this place this morning. Lord, take my few feeble words and somehow use them to speak to the hearts of somebody. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. All oh, to Jesus I surrender. surrender. All to Him I freely give. We sing this morning. Come on! I will we'll ever love and trust Him in His You come this morning. Come on, friend. Come on, right now. I surrender. You surrender all. Right here's your answer this morning. Right here's the answer to your problem. Right here's the answer to your burden. Right here's the answer to your need. Blessed Savior, I surrender. Have him sing. Everybody, everybody sing now. All to Jesus I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me. Right, everybody, I come on, y'all. surrender all. I surrender all. Amen. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I Amen. surrender 
Let's sing another verse, brother. Let's sing one more. These are praying. Girl oh, here needs help from the Lord. She's getting it. That's a blessing right there. That's an answer to prayer right there. Amen. Amen. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. Sing hey. now. I, I surrender Amen. all. You come this morning. I surrender all. Amen. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. She's playing softly this morning. Others still praying. You just heard. You just heard what the whole world needs to hear. Not because I said it, because it comes right out of that, right there. This old world's starving for the truth and don't know where it's at. Don't know where it's at. Amen. Amen. Don't leave here this morning all messed up. You can get help. There's help for you. There's help for your marriage. There's help for your home. There's help for your kids. But it ain't sinning. Sin and ain't the answer. Sin, just make it worse. Give it to the Lord. Amen. All right. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hope everybody got everything right. You don't have to leave here this morning like you came. Grab somebody by the hand or tell me going out and say, hey, let's, let's make this thing right. We'll go into Sunday school class, get down on our knees and pray. You can get right with the Lord before you leave here today. Amen. All right. Let me go over these things again right quick. Now, tonight will be the second.